Elon Musk is a man on a mission. From his futuristic electric car company to SpaceX, he wants to revolutionize the world as we see it. His vision with SpaceX is clear. He wants to establish human life on Mars. So Musk is developing a daring futuristic space travel vessel named Starship to make it happen. The Starship will be a breakthrough in space travel as Musk ventures onto uncharted territory. We saw the 2020 SpaceX NASA launch that sent the first American space mission from home soil in 10 years. We've seen the NASA Space Shuttle, but how big is the Starship? 50 feet? 100 feet? 150 feet? How does all this work? And what goes inside the giant shining spaceship we've been seeing on video? Let's find out. The Boca Chica launch pad in Texas has been quite busy since 2018, launching prototypes of the Starship. As we speak, beta testing is carried out in the newest prototypes as they try to speed up development. Musk wants to take the human race to Mars, and he wants to have at least a million humans there by 2050, and with a city built on the Red Planet. Sounds pretty daring, doesn't it? It's safe to say that it is possible, looking at what Musk has achieved with SpaceX and Tesla. So what is the thought process behind the signature rocket that looks like something we've never seen before? In the podcast with Joe Rogan, Musk jokingly admits that the inspiration to the pointy starship comes from Sacha Baron Cohen's movie, The Dictator. In the film, the dictator of the fictional nation of Wadia orders his engineers to make the rocket pointier, and Musk says he asked his engineers to do the same. Musk adds that everyone thought it would be funny if we made the rocket pointy. So we did. Jokes aside, if you've seen the testing videos circulating around the internet, you would have noticed that Elon Musk's pointy starship is shiny. This rather uncanny design looks different from the space vehicles we're used to seeing. Why? Because it's made of stainless steel. Standing at 164 feet tall, stainless steel replaces the carbon fiber that has been the standard material used in almost all vessels built for space travel. But the Starship is different. Elon isn't looking at a vehicle that will take astronauts back and forth, but the bigger picture, to someday be mass manufactured for his vision of 1 million people on Mars by 2050. Musk tweeted a while back that he intends to build 1,000 starships over 10 years. That's around 100 starships a year. And to do that, Musk explains that stainless steel is cheap and fast. Using stainless steel brings the cost down by 90% when you compare it to the carbon fiber that costs approximately $200 per kilogram. Stainless steel costs between $3 and $5 per kilogram, and the metal comes with benefits best suited for space travel. With SpaceX using methane and oxygen as fuel, the metal can withstand the force even at ultra-low temperatures. So then, what are these rings running across the ship? Take a look at the Starship prototypes, and you cannot miss the rings that look like tinfoil. The Starship uses the 301 stainless steel alloy, and each of these rings is 1.8 meters apart, which is the standard maximum roll height of stainless steel. On top of it, in the pointy section, we see the payload compartment. While the prototype models we've seen have left it empty, expect this part to be built into a cargo bay or a crew compartment big enough to hold 100 people. That's a lot of people, and looking from afar, accommodating such a huge number looks quite impossible. But zooming in, you'll see that the payload compartment is big enough to house not just the 100 people, but also a common area and even storage space. Looking at the Falcon 9, expect a lot of high-tech touchscreens in here, because SpaceX is following the same concept from Tesla, to be futuristic and minimal. If this becomes a reality, that means that the Starship will carry more people in one spacecraft at a time than any other space vessel. The most so far has been six. Musk promises a hundred. The most we've seen of the payload compartment's tip comes from Musk's phone footage. In the video, we saw a device that is a header tank. The header tank is one of two emergency storage tanks in the vessel. The other sits between the oxygen and methane tanks at the bottom. 
They are only used when the primary source of energy is exhausted and during landing. Further down the rocket is where you'll find the liquid oxygen tank and the liquid methane tank that fuel the ship. The Starship can store 1,200 tons of fuel, and this takes nearly two-thirds of the space of the 163-foot Starship. The Starship isn't going to be as long as the Falcon 9 rockets launched in 2020, and will be slightly lesser in length when comparing it to the US Space Shuttle. A Reddit user created this accurate size comparison chart to understand the sizes better. The SpaceX Falcon 9 is by far the largest we've seen, but expect the Starship to be larger in width, although it is much less in height. The Starship's latest model, the SN-10, landed safely in the tests conducted at the Boca Chica facility, but after roughly 10 minutes, the vehicle exploded. The live video posted by SpaceX shows the blast, which is said to have been due to a methane leak. Until SpaceX came to the space travel industry, there was no scientific advancement in reusing the launch rockets. The last U.S. space shuttle trip in 2011 cost nearly a half million in taxpayer money, and it was one of the main reasons why the project was shut down. SpaceX brought in innovation and technology, allowing rockets to land successfully, which was a remarkable breakthrough. The first test landing was successfully conducted in February 2018. Musk launched the Falcon Heavy into space and then landed the rockets back on Earth. The Falcon 9 made history to become the first rocket to take U.S. astronauts to space from home soil in 10 years. The Falcon 9, which is linear, lands vertically, descending back to Earth. But with the massive size of the Starship, landing needs to be something extra. In order to bring the Starship to ground, flaps are extended from the side of the rockets to create drag. There are Tesla batteries and engines up top to trigger the flaps. The SN10 had improvements in the flaps. It's a favorable sign in the timeline to make commercial space travel a reality. In Musk's words, history is going to bifurcate along two directions. One part if we stay on Earth, and then there will be some eventual extinction event, he said in a conference in Mexico. The alternative is becoming a spacefaring civilization and a multi-planet species, which I hope you would agree is the right way to go. In a short span of less than 15 years, Musk has transformed space travel with SpaceX. By the looks of it, the 1 million occupancy dream by 2050 today looks like a reasonable goal to look forward to. What do you think? Is SpaceX running behind false hope, or will the journey to Mars eventually be a reality? Let us know in the comments section.